So here we are again today. Um, I'm working on the uh, T270 again. Um, took about a week or so to get the rest of the parts in, even though they should have been overnighted, um, thanks to a individual at a particular engine company. Um, I told them uh, if I had one, more than one part that needed to be overnighted, that I'd pay the overnight shipping. Um, well, when I went to go leave the store that day, uh, this individual also told me, okay, parts should be here by tomorrow afternoon. Um, so I went back up there. Uh, this would be two days. This would be the Wednesday after I ordered the parts. I ordered on Monday. And the guy told me, oh, you didn't tell me you wanted overnight. I was like, I... Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. It's just extremely frustrating and kind of pissed me off. Um, but it is now a week. Uh, oh, shit. Almost 10 days later. Um, and I finally got the parts in uh, last night. So here I am again working on this truck. So let me show you what I got going on. So this fuel hose right here that cam comes off the fuel water separator, which that's gonna be replaced too, so don't worry about that. Um, and then up in here, you can see your high pressure fuel pump is bolted on the back of the motor, unlike the um, light duty truck version of this motor where everything's bolted on the front. Um, so you have your fuel tube coming in, you have two fuel tubes coming out, and then you have your fuel return back in there if you can kind of see it. Um, obviously I'm missing the fuel filter here. That is, uh, that's going to be coming in this afternoon. Um, I had a couple bolts that need to be replaced. I'm not going to bore you with where those bolts are, what they do. Um, so one thing I didn't know is I was working on the power steering reservoir and this is the top for the power steering re reservoir on this truck. There is a bolt that goes into this cap. As you can see, the caps are threaded, so is that. Well, this had been tightened in there so much that the cap had actually stripped on the head of the bolt and I couldn't loosen it any longer. Um, basically just took a pair of channel locks, um, grabbed the head of the bolt, unscrewed it. It's supposed to be getting a new cap today. Well, um, when I pulled this off here, I found out that there is a power steering filter inside the reservoir so I have that coming in hopefully this afternoon as well so that's those so something I wanted to show anyone who has one of these trucks is there's a bearing kit right here this bearing kit goes on the uh, fan uh, pulley well the guy at Kenworth told me that when your fan clutch goes bad, these aren't cheap, by the way, which sucked. Um, they recommend doing these bearings. I'll show you where those are here in a second. So I got a brand new fan clutch here, all new mounting hardware, so on, the bearing kit. And those bearings, which is going to be a kind of a pain in the ass now that this is all back together... Those bearings go down in here. There's one on the front, one on the back. And that's the pulley. It is a royal pain to get to when the truck is uh, back together. Um, but I had help to get the motor in and get the uh, radiator support, intercooler, and all that on. So I had to get it done that day. So I'm going to be fighting that today. Um, I'll show you... When everything's done, I'm going to make another video when me, when we attempt to start this truck. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to have it started today. Hoping I'll be, be able to do a couple uh, uh, test drives, maybe put a few miles on it. Nothing crazy, maybe 5 or 10 miles. Just make sure all the bugs are worked out, so on and so forth, before I return it to the owner. For anyone who is just watching this... This is a Kenworth T270. It has a 6.7 pack car motor in it, which is basically a 6.7 Cummins motor. It is a rollback tow truck. 
Um, it runs diesel, has def, just like the light duty trucks do. And I have gone through the entire process of uh, pulling the old motor out and replacing this motor. Unfortunately, I didn't get any videos from the very beginning of pulling the motor out. Um, I was just dumb and didn't even think about making videos. Um, there are a couple things that I do want to mention, though. If you go to replace uh, an injector or injectors on this truck... Let me get, see if I can get up here and show you what I'm talking about here. So, once you get the valve, you have your six fuel lines. They come in on the driver's side of the head. So, you have your fuel lines right here. And you can barely see it. Just beyond that nut right there, you can see a, a lock nut that goes into the head there. It's right there so when you go to do an injector on these on these motors this should be the same for any uh, pack car uh, px6 or 67 cummins you'll want to pull your fuel line you'll want to back that lock nut right there completely out you want to pull it completely out of the motor inside there there is a fuel tube that runs from the injector line into the injector it's a steel tube has a i don't know maybe a 5 16 or quarter inch size hole that runs through it what you'll want to do is pull that um you'll want to back that out which you can just the older the motor is the more miles the harder it's going to be don't use pliers don't screw up the threads what you want to do is you're going to want to pull that fuel tube back at least an inch and a half. I personally, I prefer to remove it all together because then you can clean everything, make sure everything's good to go. Once you do that, then you'll be able to get the injector out. In order to get the injector out, you have to pull a minimum of the exhaust rocker arm. Um and the applicable hardware. It should take two eight millimeter bolts on the injector hold down clamp. And I cannot remember the size of the wire uh, nuts that are on top of the injector at the moment. Uh, once you do that, uh, I really wish I would have taken a video of this. It, I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on YouTube that shows you how to do it. Um, there is, if you have the room, Underneath the injector, if you plan, especially if you plan on reusing them, there is a lip between the injector and the head. You're going to want to take a flathead screwdriver, and you're going to want to very carefully get between those two and start working it up. It will be difficult the higher mileage it has. This truck has, I want to say it's roughly 440,000, I think. Once I get power back on the truck, I'll be able to confirm. Um, and what you do is when you slowly start working it around, you want to try to get from more than one side, try to get 180 degrees across from each other, um, and just start working the injector up. The O-ring, there's a very good chance the O-ring is going to be stuck between the injector and the head. So that's, that is the force that you're trying to break. Um, just be careful don't break the cap on the injector um, don't scratch the injector anything like that um, if you're planning on reusing them like i did for this motor once the injector is out there is two seals on the injector that you need to replace regard i mean if you're going to reuse it cool if you're not your new injector should come with them if not make sure you get new ones do not reuse the old ones it's very important you don't reuse the old ones if you tighten the injector down and you got to pull it back out, replace the copper crush washer. Um, if the injector has been in the motor for any period of time when it's been running, replace the O-ring. Trust me, be on the safe side. Don't reuse it. It can cause lots of headache later on down the road. Um, you'll want to pull the O-ring off, which is super easy to do. Just get a, a pick. Um, just don't make sure you don't scratch the sealing surface on the injector. There's a copper crush washer at the very bottom 
of the injector on the uh, that goes around the injector nozzle. When you go to pull that off, the way I do it, some people don't like it. Some people tell me I'm going to be wrong. This is just the way I do it. I'm not. I, I'm, this is a hobby for me. This is not. I'm not a professional. This is not what I do um, for a living. So what I do is I take a razor blade and I start working around very carefully between the uh, copper crush washer and the injector nozzle. That washer should eventually break free. Um, there, the higher mileage it has, the more carbon it's going to have on it, the harder it's going to be to get it off. Once you get it free, you should be able to twist it by hand, rock it, and you should be able to break some of that carbon off. And you should be able to just slide it off the end of the injector. It is imperative that you clean as much of the carbon off the injector nozzle as you can for two reasons. One, just it's going to make it, it'll make sure you get a good seal when you put the injector back in. Two, as much of the carbon you can clean off, the better fuel pattern you're going to get when it injects into the cylinder, better fuel burn, better fuel economy, etc. Um, when you go to put the injector back in, the injector has um, almost like a little dowel pin on one side, and 180 degrees from that dowel pin, a little bit further down the injector, you'll see a hole in the side of the injector that hole has to be facing that fuel tube that runs from the fuel line through the head that is a metal on metal contact seal so you want to make sure you don't scratch that surface and or scratch the tip of the fuel nozzle or fuel tube i mean um, the dowel pin is 180 degrees on the other side of that so when you go to put the retainer back down make sure that you use the side of the retainer that has the cutout for the dowel pin. That is the opposite side from the fuel tube. Once you put them back in, make sure you torque them correctly. If you don't, you could get leaks, you could get oil in your cylinders, you get fuel bypassing um, up into the head. It could be could be a very big problem and it could be very difficult to troubleshoot so make sure that you get your torque specs i don't remember them off the top of my head and you torque them down correctly when you go to put your valves back on it is imperative that you make sure you check your clearances on your valve don't just stick the valve in it's like oh it was good when i pulled it out it should be good when i put it in no if you have your valve cover off it is always a good idea just to check the valve lash on all the valves. Um, like I said, I, I feel like an idiot. I didn't post a, vi a video of me adjusting valve lash or checking or doing any of the injector work. I, I apologize about that. I'm going to try to do better about that in the future. So that's what I was talking about on the injectors. So as of right now, that's pretty much all I got. Um, and just keep, just stay tuned and see my next video.